Emily in Paris, or should I say, Emily in Paris, follows Emily Cooper, a 20-something marketing exec from Chicago. Just as Emily's boss Madeline is about to take a job at the Paris-based marketing firm Savoir, she discovers that she's pregnant and makes the decision to stay in Chicago to raise her baby. And so, Emily takes the job and relocates to France. She creates the Emily in Paris Instagram account to chronicle her new life, but things aren't quite as magical as she first anticipated. Her bright and upbeat demeanor immediately puts her at odds with her new boss, Sylvie. Sylvie seems to be stuck in her old ways and grows resentful of Emily's creative new ideas and wholesome charm winning over both old and new clients for Savoir. Making things even more tense in Emily's relationship with Sylvie is that one of Savoir's main clients, Antoine, the owner of a perfume company, has been having a years-long affair with Sylvie, but also seems to be taking a liking to Emily. And even though it's eventually revealed that Antoine's feelings for Emily are platonic and not romantic, Emily does help Sylvie recognize that she deserves more than being a mistress. Other colleagues at Savoir include the dramatic Julie and then the quirky Luke, who at first follow Sylvie's lead in icing out Emily, but are quickly won over by her persistent positivity. Meanwhile, Emily's Instagram account is gaining followers fast, leading to Emily becoming an influencer in her own right, allowing her to use her newfound clout to bring in new clients for Savoir. While things are going great for her professionally, Emily's personal life is a bit more complicated. Dealing with cultural differences and a language barrier lead Emily to feeling like an outcast. Luckily, she befriends Mindy, the daughter of a wealthy Chinese family who now works as a nanny in Paris. Mindy had big dreams of being a professional singer, but after an embarrassing performance on China's biggest singing competition show, she abandoned her dreams and moved to Paris to live a simpler life. Mindy helps introduce Emily to all of the fun that Paris has to offer. In moving to Paris, Emily left behind her boyfriend Doug in Chicago with the intention of having a long-distance relationship. But the distance becomes too much for Doug, and the two break up, leaving Emily single in the most romantic city on Earth. She develops feelings for her neighbor Gabrielle, who lives in the apartment below hers. But the attraction is complicated when Emily discovers that Gabrielle has a girlfriend, Camille, who strikes up a genuine friendship with Emily. As Emily and Gabrielle grow closer, even sharing a kiss, Emily begins to feel guilty about betraying Camille and tries to pull away from Gabrielle. Meanwhile, for Gabrielle and Camille, their relationship begins to strain on its own. Gabrielle is a chef with dreams of buying the restaurant he currently works at, and Camille asks her family to loan Gabrielle the money required for the purchase. But Gabrielle refuses the money, not wanting to be indebted to Camille's family. Everything comes to a head in the season finale. Emily secures fashion icon Pierre Caldo as a client of Savoir, but when he's the target of embarrassing publicity stunts at the hands of young streetwear designer's gray space, Pierre loses confidence in himself and pulls out of Paris fashion week. The debacle causes Sylvie to fire Emily. But after Emily delivers a pep talk to Pierre, the designer is inspired for a collection and the Savoir team hijack Grace Space's venue to premiere his new looks. The event is a huge success and Sylvie decides to keep Emily on as an employee at Savoir. Things are much more complicated for Emily in her personal life. Her best friend Mindy takes a part-time job singing at a drag club and is subsequently fired by her conservative employers for whom she nannies. So now, Mindy was forced to move in with Emily. Emily also begins a burgeoning relationship with Pierre's nephew, Matthew, who after a huge success of Fashion Week, offers to whisk Emily away to a romantic vacation in Saint-Tropez. Gabrielle, meanwhile, decides to buy a cheaper restaurant in Normandy, leading to his imminent departure from Paris. This fractures his relationship with Camille, and knowing that this could be the last time she would see Gabrielle, Emily decides to give in on her feelings and sleep with him. But on the day of Gabrielle's departure, he gets an offer from Antoine to invest in his Paris restaurant, meaning Gabrielle would be staying around after all. And so, as season one comes to a close, Emily is caught between her loyalty to her friend Camille, her burgeoning relationship with Matthew, and her true feelings for Gabrielle. Now that's everything that happened in season one of Emily in Paris. Let me know some of your favorite moments in the comments below and what you think will happen in season two. And that does it for me in this one. I'll see you in the next one.